Hi there, welcome to our Wolf Industries second weekly live stream. I'm Bill Pierce, Vice President and General Manager here at Wolf Industries, and we thank you for tuning in with us. Uh, today we're going to kick off with some tips and ideas of what we should be doing right now during this downtime, at least most for most of us it's downtime, uh, to stay busy and to make sure we're in a good position when we come out of all this. And um, so the first thing I wanted to mention is that we need to stay in touch. You've got to stay in touch with your customers. You have to keep your name out there in front of them. Um, let's be realistic. A lot of sharpeners um, have an anonymity problem. They know you're the scissor guy. They know the guy that comes in with t-shirt and a hat. And it's got scissors on it and shorts and he, he has a van out there. That's the scissor guy but they don't know your name. That's bad enough to start with when the market's good and when things were running normal. That is not good right now. If they don't know your name, if you're not staying in touch with them, you will be forgotten. All of these restaurants that are open right now that are uh, putting so much into promotional, uh, all the big names, and they're putting so much into curbside service, they're not making money. They're staying in front of our eyes so that we'll remember them when this is all over. So be sure you're making those contacts. We know that sales aren't going to come out of it. In most cases, you never know you might get something, but you're keeping your name out there so they know who to call when things clear up. Uh, so make those contacts. You may want to consider approaching them and saying, is there any work that needs to be done now so it's ready, any repairs, any sharpening, so that they're ready to go when there's work to be had. So make sure you're making those contacts. The second point is you're going to have to get a little creative. Um, there's some ideas out there, work now, pay later. You know which customers you can approach with that. You know who the good ones are. Maybe they don't have good cash flow right now, but you can invest some time in that and get paid and rewarded later for it. You may want to consider switching some industries. If you were beauty and grooming only, there may be some industrial opportunities out there. There may be some knife sharpening. You want to be flexible. We have a term in youth ministry that I use called Semper Gumby. That means always flexible. It's something to apply right now. Uh, you may want to find a location. Um, depending on your area, you may be okay to set up on a roadside and do some sharpening as long as everybody is uh, adhering to the social distancing protocols. You never know what you might get if you have nothing to do sitting at your house or sitting there at least getting your name out with your trailer or your van may do some good. Uh, this could be a time to look to do some home sharpening. There's a lot of people making masks right now. A lot of them have scissors that weren't great to start with. You may have an opportunity to do some sharpening or maybe even sell them a, a good new fabric shear. Um, also, this is a good time to do some things that are kind of out of the norm. If you've ever been to one of our Wolf Edge Pro seminars, you'll hear me use the term, fire some customers this may be a great time for that. Those customers that aren't profitable, those customers that are um, not easy to deal with, and it may be a good time to go find some better customers. Maybe you have a shop that's, they're not necessarily a bad customer or unprofitable, but they're way off your route now, and this is a good time to do a reset. This is a good time to maybe reset your entire route to make it a little more feasible, to make it uh, a little better for you and have it make more sense, spend less time, less miles, less gas. Also, this is a great time to complete those projects that always start with, if I only had enough time, I could or I would dot, dot, dot. Guess what? You probably have that time right now. So now's the time to take on that task. You also want to keep your skills sharp, pun intended. As we all know with skills, use it or lose it. If you're not, if you haven't touched scissors in a couple weeks, you, as long as, even as long as you've been doing this, 20 years or more, you may be surprised at, um, you know, what happens when you don't work for a long time and then go back to it. So hopefully you're staying up on those skills. This is a great time to work on your weakness. What's your trouble spot? Ride line? Washing out the tips? Dressing the wheels? Maintaining your equipment? Work on that right now. Get a bunch of scissors. Uh, get a bunch of old beaters that you have. Can't ruin them anymore, can you? Mess them up, see if you can fix them. Work on that, clipper blade sharpening. You know, what's your hardest thing? Work on your pressures. 
Jason at the Edge Pro can certainly help you with that. Give him a call if you've got questions. Um, make sure that, like I said, you're keeping up on those skills so that you don't lose that edge, pun intended. You better be ready for the restart because when things open up, I think it's going to be fast, hard, and heavy. We need to be prepared or there will be money left on the table for us. We need to tune up our equipment, tune up our vehicles. We need to read up on newsletters like On the Edge and the, Ed and the Sharpeners Report. You can uh, check in with them. We're going to put information on the chat to contact them. They've got lots of articles about tips and tricks and sharpening and marketing. Uh, great publications. You need to stock up your supplies. You need to fill up your vehicle. You need to fill up your little container cases with all your scissor parts. You need to clean up your machines. You need to clean up your vehicle. And let's be realistic, after what could be six to eight weeks in quarantine, we probably need to clean up ourselves. Make sure that you're one of those first people to get a haircut. Make sure that a month or more of sitting around in t-shirt and shorts doesn't become your professional uniform to go out and sharpen. You also need to tech up. If you need to upgrade your credit card services or even start using credit cards, now's a great time to do that. If you need to button up your accounting practices and maybe switch everything to an online program or computer program, now's a great time to do that. My final point is simply this. You need to be prepared to shut up. No, I'm not being mean. But we need to keep our opinions to ourselves. When we come out of this, nobody really is going to want to hear our thoughts on any politics or the handling of this pandemic. It's bad enough in normal times when we talk in polarizing opinions. But when we come out of this, all you're going to do is alienate yourself. Now, I know we're sharpeners and a lot of us say if they don't like the way I am. Well, then they can just lump it. Well, guess what? If they lump it, we lose money. You lose money. So I would encourage you to be positive, be uplifting, be encouraging. Ask people how they're doing. Let's not spend this time griping, talking about how it could have been done, should have been done, or that we think it was perfect, no matter what side of the aisle we're on. Even if the person you're talking with is of the same mindset as you, you could have a great conversation with them and alienate everybody else in that shop. So let me encourage you to shut up, sharpen, smile, and say thank you. That plus, if we're talking too much, we're missing money. We need to get this done and get on to the next shop. So I hope you find these, these suggestions and these points helpful. I know in a lot of cases, these are things we've heard before. We just need to be reminded of them. So right now, we're going to open things up. If there's any questions that you have, uh, Dan's going to feed those to me at this time we're going to wait here just a second because it takes about a minute for your questions to get through here on the chat while we do that and while we wait for just a moment caleb and glenn are getting queued up here they're going to do a session on left hand scissors that i hope you find very interesting all right I'm going to jump on the chat myself, so if there's any questions that, that come up while Glenn and Caleb are presenting, then I'll be able to join in and help with that. Thank you for your time. We're going to transfer over just a moment and do a quick switch of equipment, and we'll be right back with you. Thank you.
Hey, and welcome back. Uh, we appreciate you sticking with us. Uh, my name is Caleb. I do sales and marketing here at Wolf Industries. And today I've got Glenn Burke with me. He is our master sharpener and our trainer and our technician here at Wolf Industries. Uh, so if you uh, ever come to Wolf Industries and take a class, uh, if you want to learn training on Here to Okami Gold, uh, twice as sharp, um, once the virus is over and, and we're able to come back out and, uh, and do these trainings, you'll be training with Glenn Berg. Um, so I kind of want to do a little welcome of, of, of what we're doing here. Uh, we're going to do left-handed scissors. This was dropped into um, the Sharpers chat on Facebook um, last week, so we wanted to address this. We're going to look at um, a few differences between uh, left-handed scissors, true left, left-handled, uh, what that means, and then two ways to sharpen that on the twice as sharp. We're also going to look at two things that I glossed over last week. Uh, one of the things I was going to talk about was dressing the wheels. I had it on my notes. Completely forgot. Um, so yeah, that's the plan for today. Uh, we've changed our setup a little bit. Um, we, we're still a little limited on qu equipment. Uh, equipment uh, for live streaming is back ordered right now just because everything's crazy. So we're trying to make do with what we have. Um, I know we had some issues with the audio being a little low. Um, if that is still the issue, uh, let us know. We can make some adjustments. I do have a headset mic here that I can put on and try to translate what Glenn is doing. Um, we have a microphone boomed ahead of us, so hopefully that will capture what he's going to do without capturing too much machine noise. Uh, we also have our overhead cam here looking down. Hopefully that camera is going to give you the perspective of what it's going to look like when you're doing the sharpening. So. Uh, hopefully this is all going to work uh, well. Um, let us know in the comments what is working, what's not working, audio, lights, everything, because we can always pivot a little bit here and hopefully make some changes for, for next week. Uh, if you see me looking off to the side, that is where we have our notes. Um, and so we're going to jump right into it. Left-handed scissors. So right before we get into sharpening here with Glenn, um, one thing I want to talk about is the differences in a true left um, scissor and a left-handled scissor. The true left scissors are what can um, start to cause a little bit of issues when we go to clamp them in our normal way. We're gonna sharpen a pair of scissors, we go to do left-handed scissors, and we realize, man, this pair of scissors is a little bit funny. So we're gonna jump in with a true left-handed shear. So the thumb blade is gonna be on the right side of the finger blade. The blades are backwards from a right-handed shear. Um, so one way that we can tell that, a quick way, is um, if you hold the shear in your hand sort of in this position, the blade on the top, whichever hand that is, is going to be the type of scissor it is. So if, if you can kind of see in this, I don't know if you can see in this, uh, the thumb blade is on the top here. That is a true left scissor. If we flip it over, finger blade is on the top. It is in my left hand. Um, that is a true left hand scissor. Um, this is a left-handled shear. So what this is, is right-handed blades handle for a left-handed person. So I'm left-handed, so I kind of want to, I know that there's probably not a whole lot of us out there. I think we looked up yesterday, uh, there's 10% is what the internet said. So if we can trust Google, there's 10% of us are left-handed. <laughs> um, so what we do as a left-handed person, so when you, we're going to put our, normally we're used to cutting with right-handed scissors. So when you have a right-handed scissor, you will push pressure forward with your thumb to help the blades cross to do that shearing action. Well, if we put the same blades in our left hand and we push that pressure forward the same way a right-handed person does, we actually split the blades. We, we pull the blades apart and then it's not going to cut at all. So what we've learned to do is pull the pressure back with our thumbs to get that shearing action. So on this pair of scissors right here, which is a right-handed shear because the top blade is in my right hand, but it's a left-handed handle. The handle fits my left hand, but I'm still going to have to pull my thumb to get the blades to cross to do the shearing action. Um, the reason you would have a scissor like this is because left-handed people are used to cutting on right-handed scissors, so we're used to its habit for us to pull our pressure that way, um, but it is a more comfortable handle. Also, for uh, industrial applications, when somebody is sharpening hundreds of pairs of scissors um, in, a, in a day or in a, in a couple days, um, they don't have to switch up the twice as sharp because sharpening this pair of scissors is going to be the same 
by sharpening a right-handed pair of scissors. So if that was clear as mud, let me know in the comments. Um, I do have the live stream up here on my phone, so I will try to be um, jumping into the questions here. We also have Dan over there like we did last week. He is going to be feeding us some questions. Um, but when it comes to sharpening these scissors, I'm going to turn it over to Glenn, and he is going to walk us through what the twice as sharp manual um, says to sharpen. So we're going to jump in, transition over here to Glenn. All right, guys. Um, but I have, I have a copy of the uh, ma actual manual page. It's page 20 out of the twice as sharp manual, and it shows you how to sharpen true left-handed shears with the wheels still configured for right-hand shear sharpening. Uh, the reason that you would want to do this is you've got uh, 20 or 30 right-handed shears and one left-handed shear in that, in that batch. You don't want to take the time to swap your wheels, do one shear. This is a way that you, be, you would be able to sharpen that true left-hand shear with the wheels configured for right-hand shears. Okay, I'm going to set this one aside. This is a true left hand Kai 7250. And the first thing that you're going to want to do is preset your angle. Now, we did this a little earlier. Mine's set at 35. With a right handed shear, you would clamp in the sharpening position. With a true left hand shear, you're going to flip over into the honing position. and you're gonna have your cutting edge down. And you will sharpen the same way you would with a right-handed shear, the same, same light pressure, same motion, but your cutting edge will now be down, okay? Take your time with this. Uh, it's, it's going to be awkward, so don't get in a hurry. Now, the best thing is to have this wheel dressed as smooth as possible. So you don't have a chatter. I'm gonna do a little scratch test. I'm lined up just right. And I'm going to be sharpening just as soft and smooth as possible. Check for burr, check to make sure that I've sharpened all the way to my cutting edge, one more pass. I like that. Now I've got a burr and I'm going to sharpen now my finger blade, rotate over. And again, take your time. Okay, I've got a burr. Now, I'm gonna use the same process. Spread to close, press to open. Take your time. The blades are gonna move opposite directions as you would with a right-handed shear. Press, open, spread to close, press to open. Burr is moved out. Now I'm ready to hone. For safety's sake, Because you're going to be in the honing position, honing on the outside edge of the wheel. Again, take your time. What I did is I turned the machine off so I can move my shear around in an awkward position. I'm going to go ahead and pull this out, move my arm around. Now this 
is going to leave a limited amount of space between the end of the finger blade and the machine. You notice that my arm is not in the normal stacked position. It's actually spread out. This is going to give us freedom of movement. And we're going to use this outside edge of my honing wheel. Now this honing wheel has got to be absolutely smooth also. We'll use either the T-bar, you can use the very edge of your dressing brick in this manner. Were you able to see that, Dan? Okay. T-bar is what I prefer. And that will give me a nice, smooth contact. Again, take your time. Check for your burr. I like that. Come out away from the machine. Now I'm going to cut that burr off and I'm going to hone my finger blade. Again, I'm going to clamp in the honing position, get my arm turned around where I need to, move carefully into the machine, make my contact. Burr feels good. My bevel looks nice and clean. I'll be able to now cut that burr off. Check your tips. Actually look pretty good. That is sharpening a shear with the wheels configured in a right hand shear setup. Now if you've got a dozen or more of these left-handed shears to do, and you don't have a second machine set up for doing left-handed shears, I'm going to show you how we swap the wheels to get that done. Right before we uh, jump in real quick, I just want to make sure that we're giving enough time for people to ask questions. So um, before we jump into the step two, because this next thing that we're about to show is specifically what was asked for uh, on the Facebook group. Um, and seeing these wheels get flipped. Um, so what we were, we were on page 20 in the sharpening manual. So if you have a twice as sharp manual and you kind of want to follow on those steps, uh, that is in the manual on page 20. But I just want to make sure that we've got um, enough time to answer questions uh, before we jump in to the next thing. Um, and one thing I do want to have Glenn do real quick before we go into the next and as we wait on these questions to come in, is specifically dressing the white wheel. Okay. Um, because I did see that comment uh, on Facebook as well. Um, how to uh, dress the white wheel? Again, my favorite tool is this T-bar. Um, it it cuts quicker and seems to leave a better finish. But this dressing brick does a fine job if you're using it properly. What I'm going to do is tip this machine back so that you can see a little more clearly where I'm going to set this stone. I take the, thank you, Kim. Yep. I take the stone and I set the corner on the finger, finger guard, the lower finger guard, and I rock this top corner back and forth across the face of the wheel like a windshield wiper. And it may not be this top, very top corner. It might be 
slightly below on the on the face. But I'm I'm using the finger guard as a stable position to move this back and forth. And typically, what I'll do is I'll I'll get a smooth spot started on an edge and work it all the way across the face. And this is what it'll look like in motion. Is that a good position right now? All right. Again, I'm going to set one corner on the lower finger guard. My personal preference, I like a slight radius on these edges, just in case my knuckles happen to bump into it and it doesn't slice into my finger. That's using the dressing brick, the T-bar, I'll use the exact same way. I'll put one edge of the T-bar against my lower finger guard and then rotate across the face of the wheel. Slight chamfer or radius, whichever you prefer on the edges. And that's how I'm going to dress my wheel. Cool. Right. So, um, yeah, so Dan, looks like Dan jumped into the chat to answer uh, Tim. That's a great, Tim asks uh, if we're going to be doing pinking shears, uh, left-handed pinking shears. Uh, not today, uh, but pinking shears is a great idea for a future topic. Um, because we actually get that question relatively often because pinking shears are a little different, a little weird, uh, get them to work. So um, yeah, so for a future stream, that may be something that would be good to show. So thanks Tim for jumping in there and asking the questions. Um, if you're in here watching, let us know where you're from, uh, say hey, and I think we're gonna go on to the next step here, which is sharpening left-handed scissors by flipping the wheels, the wheels on the machine. Yes, yeah. Now, I've already taken my guard screws out makes easy removal. Another point is have your vacuum ready and clean the dust out of the out of the machine. Good opportunity just for some quick easy maintenance. I have a three quarter inch box end wrench. Hold the wheel that you're going to loosen the nut on. Both nuts loosen turning towards you and they will tighten turning away from you. What I did is I turned the shaft just to get the wheel pulled off. Makes the wheel move a little easier. There's gonna be a slight bit of dust and debris on the shafts. It'd be a good idea to make sure that's cleaned off. Now, that's why I have this. So what he's doing real quick is, as he's putting this wheel on, uh, the finger guard here is kind of blocking the wheel from going on. So he's gonna have to, you know, last week I talked about adjusting those. Uh, he's gonna have to make an adjustment here and um, fix the finger guard there to allow the wheel um, to fit there. Now there's a slight wobble. I don't know if you can see that right yet, but I'm gonna get this wheel on. And with that wobble, I'm gonna make a slight adjustment on my wheel. Depending on how much time I want to spend on it. And what I'll do is I will slightly tap 
on the washer, make sure it's set flat against the wheel. Then I will take my box end wrench. Can you see this all right, Dan? Let me move it this way. And so I do want to say real quick, this was some information that I said last time, uh, last week that was incorrect. Uh, when I talked about kind of tapping with a hammer, uh, we don't want to do that on the white wheel itself. And so if you notice what he just did is he tapped on the washer itself. You don't want to tap on the stone, the white wheel, because of you don't want to cause any hairline cracks or anything that would cause damage to the wheel uh, when it's under load. What I'm going to do is set my box end wrench on the nut. It is sticking out to the back of the machine. Take my brass hammer and just a, a light, light tap. That's it. I'm going to put my guard back on. Do the same thing on my honing wheel. I'm going to move this over a little bit more so you can see it from the top. And that's it. Center that again. How's that? Lynn? Yes, sir. Can you put that wrench back on there and in a little bit slower show where you're hitting the hammer? Because on here, it, it goes so fast, you can't exactly see where you're Okay. <laughs> All I'm doing is tapping the wrench out here. Thank you. Um, further away, the more torque you're going to get, but really, it doesn't have to be super tight. This just shocks that nut in and it'll hold the wheel tighter. All right, set this right there. Now, now I'm ready to sharpen a true left-hand shear with the wheels configured for left-hand shears, and my clamp is going to be used in the normal positions. In other words, I'm going to sharpen in the sharpening position. I'm going to hone in the honing position. To clamp, I'm going to come over here. My cutting edge will be up. Let's slide this. Well, we're okay. going to make some adjustments here for the camera so you can see that. You know, we're How's that? kind of blocking with the picture in picture there. Um, yeah, I think that looks good. We're good. Now, do a little scratch test. This is a knife edge shear. So I'm going to make an angle adjustment here. And we have a video on uh, how to do a scratch test. Um, so what we'll do is when once the live stream's over and the video is posted on YouTube, we'll be sure to link that video um, uh, in the description that shows this process of what Glenn is doing here uh, in pretty close detail and some tips and tricks on how to make this part a little bit easier. Uh, but yeah, the whole scratch test and, and getting your angle set um, is pretty important. So we want to highlight that uh, in a separate video. All right. I like where I am. Get My dust cover. To make sure we get. Yeah, safety first. Get that on. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Now my clamp is in the sharpening position. Double check. Okay, I like the position of my angle. Now, did you hear it rattle? How oh, it's bouncing. It'd be good to be able to do a real quick dress on it. touch the outside edge of the wheel and that's where it, where it bounced but my face of my wheel is very smooth were you able to see that Dan? Okay.
So he has uh, removed the clamp uh, from the arm. He's checking the, checking his burr there. Is that off the camera? You're Sorry a little, about you're, that. You're a little bit back from the camera. But <laughs> all right. What I was, say what I was just doing. checking for a burr, making sure I've sharpened all the way to my cutting edge. I can see whether or not the damage is removed. Then I'm going to go ahead and now this being a knife edge shear, I'm going to carefully remove that burr. Then I'll be able to clamp my finger blade in. I have to change the angle a little bit. So on a knife edge shear, um, both blades are different angles. Um, so what he's going to have to do here is another scratch test and then make an adjustment on the clamp to change the angle for this blade. Um, that's why the process is slightly different for this shear. Uh, the normal. The question about the you know a, a true left hand pinker. This this sharpening process uh, is focusing on your wheel configurations. Um, we have uh, we have a sharpening process for pinking shears, and so you would either have the wheels configured for a true left or a right handed shear whichever way you want to sharpen that, but you would have to follow the pinking shear process, sharpening process then. Nailed it. I'm using very light pressure. So what he did there, he made an extra pass uh, to make sure that he got the tip on the scissors. Um, and he's checking burr, checking for the burr, and checking to make sure that everything is sharpened uh, nice and uniformly all the way down the cutting edge. All right, now that I have a burr on it, I'm gonna move to the holding wheel side. down to the cutting edge. Be able to cut the burr off. Cut burr off here on this side. Okay, sorry about that. And that's true left hand with the wheel set up for left handed shears. Cool. So uh, a couple things I wanted to talk about is um, specifically I, I had this question um, when I was at a processing plant. Um, they had s multiple people that were left-handed. I mean, they were they were using um, they had a few true left-handed scissors. Um, a lot of the places I go into will use these right-handed scissors with the left handles, uh, but this plant specifically was using true left-hand scissors, and so. Um, what they, the process that they went with was this process here that Glenn just showed where the wheels are reversed and so what they did is they had a twice as sharp set up just for their left handed scissors with the wheels in this configuration and they had a second twice as sharp set up in the standard configuration uh, for all their right handed shears. So they would always switch between their two machines because they had actually had enough uh, left handed shears that warranted that. And that was the quickest way for them to do it. I mean, they could mm -hmm. just jump back and forth uh, between the two machines. Um, so I did want to just kind of make that note there that that's something that I've seen when I was out in the field in, in like the industrial setting. Um, and so we want to jump in here and see if we got any questions coming in. Let us know. Dan, do we got? There is one. Um, Here's a question. So here it says, in the first example, you sharpen trailing edge and then the second leading edge. Except for the wheel position, does it make a difference? 
Trailing edge to leading edge. Uh, are they meaning cutting edge, the cutting edge up or cutting edge down as far as leading edge or trailing edge? If on the, when the wheels are in the right hand position, you have to sharpen with the cutting edge down in the hone position. So you would have the cutting edge down in both scenarios. The cutting edge would be down. And this is for when the wheels are if, in standard. When the wheels are in the standard position. Well, we hope that answered your question. Um, let us know. Um, let us know if that's what you were talking about um, in the comments. Hopefully, that answered your question. Uh, we'll we'll kind of be watching to see if any more questions come through here. Um, we appreciate you guys sticking around with us. Uh, next week, um, same time, we're going to be doing the Hero Two. Uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of maintenance on the Hero Two. How to keep it. Uh, In the abrasives um, and then maybe even um, some with the diamond paste uh, that was a question I saw on Facebook so um, I want to take a second here to say if you uh, give us a topic and something you'd like to see covered if we choose to do that topic for a show we are going to give you a gift card um, to our, our website so I did see that one on Facebook so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get on this afternoon I will tag you in uh, in the post and let you know that you've got a gift card uh, coming to you so please uh, drop us questions in here uh, in the chat with ideas that you'd like to see I saw pinking shears come through I saw thinners I believe um, so yes uh, any topic you'd like to see us cover in future things let us know uh, if we pick it to demonstrate uh, we will be giving you a gift card to our website um, yeah, cool. Uh, we appreciate it. I believe that's it. So next week, same time. Let's see another question. Yeah, follow up. We got a follow Go up ahead. question here. Um, are you seeing it on yours? Okay. Yes, here. Here we'll pull up. Uh, we got some follow up questions. Um, yes, here we go. Yes, the trailing edge uh, wheel away from the edge, but in the leading edge, the cutting edge of the wheel turns into the edge. Does this make a difference? Yes, but what we're trying to do is avoid uh, having to swap the wheels. If you don't have a second machine set up for, um, for doing a true left-handed shear, uh, this is one way, this is an option for you. Uh, leading edge, uh, trailing edge, uh, you're, not gonna, it, you're not gonna sacrifice the quality of your, your edge, okay? Um, it does put a, a burr slightly on a different, uh, different position on the back side of the um, I don't know if we can see. There will be a slightly more prominent burr on the top of the bevel that you wouldn't have if you were sharpening down. I guess you're, you're calling this the leading edge. Um, there's just going to be a slightly different burr formation, but it's not going to change the quality of your sharpening edge. And those burrs are going to be taken care of in the honing operation anyway. So it really isn't uh, something to be worried about. All right. Appreciate it. Um, let's uh, thank you, Tony, for answering Ron's uh, question there. Uh, yes, very similar process on the honing wheel. Um, curved scissors. Ruben asked, uh, how do you sharpen curved scissors? What I'll do is when, when this video gets posted, I will drop a link in the description. We have a video on sharpening curved scissors. Um, hopefully that will answer your question in regards there. Um, if it doesn't, let us know. Um, we maybe can do a session specifically on curved, on curved scissors down the road. 
Um, all right, yeah, keep dropping your uh, keep dropping your suggestions down in the comments. Uh, we appreciate it. We will be here next Friday at 1 p.m., same time, same place. Thank you. Thank you.